Hello and welcome to the J Request Show. Today we shift our attention to discuss the well-being of Nigerians. It is important to acknowledge the crisis and the ongoing unrest in so many areas. The African continent struggles in so many uncountable ways which has affected lives and well-being. Generation to generation have often said the same thing. The present generation are united to speak out and fight for what is right. Nigerians seek to move towards a new Nigeria. We need to look back at its origin. We need to look at its history also. We will be looking in depth at four areas. What was Nigeria before the Agamation? Formation of Nigeria's 1914 to 1960. Independence of Nigeria. Did Nigeria get their independence? The notarization and the Northern policy. As I will be joined by the Nigeria Youth Association, which is a non-governmental organization of passionate Nigerian youths with the objective of fostering unity and community development. Zenabi works in commercial law and also human rights activist. Favor Adesola is a current MBA student. He is a well-known professional dancer. Stevie Monaghan is half Nigerian and Irish, studies security and conflict, which is related to international relations. Precious Ashifo is an MDR vigilance specialist with an MSc in cancer research. Angela Ashiwumi is a human rights advocate and content creator on YouTube. Please stay tuned for more of the program. We'll be right back. Hello and welcome back to the show as always. I'm your host, Chris Arnold, and thank you for tuning in to the Jury Quest show. And make sure you follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and also on Instagram. Like we all said in the very beginning of the show, it's all about the ongoing issue and things that can better Nigeria for present and future generation. My guest today, a wonderful guest, who have different careers and different interests to the way they want to see the future of Nigeria. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for coming on the show. Good morning to you all. How are you all doing? Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks. Thank you very much, guys. So very quick, guys, we have four, four uh, items we want to go into this very morning. And some of these items and things, I believe most of you, you are, you are qualified to go into them. And even though you're not qualified, it is your freedom of speech and you have every right to you know, express what is best for the country you love. And that country is Nigeria. As your host, I'll be going through some of all these things. I want to hear what your take out going to be. So first of all, I want to talk about what was the Nigeria before. Let's go into that. Let's look into it and let's educate ourselves a little bit more. So I'll throw it to the floor. I want to take this first. I think this is, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll take this one up if that's okay with everyone. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Okay. So, um, yeah, what was Nigeria before it, be it was called Nigeria? So, well, um, history records Nigeria as having, you know, a lot of empires and kingdoms as far back as the 12th century. Um, suffice to say that these empires and kingdoms weren't called Nigeria at the time. Um, they had, let's say, for instance, the Jos Plateau, which is uh, situated in the north, north of Nigeria. They had their system of trade. They were trading through southeast Sudan and they were trading through the Sahara. They had their trade. They had, that's how they amassed all their wealth. And then if you take a look at the, the knock art, they had their, their form of art, which you can trace through, you know, the Benin Empire, the Igbo culture, Ife, all of that. So they had their system. And if you take a look at the, the Yoruba land, as well as the Benin Empire, they had their system, they had their culture, they had their monarchy, they had their political systems in place, they had their form of legal tender, they had the way they traded, they had their plethora of gods, if you call it, they had their religions, they had everything, you know, but they weren't called Nigeria, they were empires, they had their kingdoms, they even history also even i mean some historical records have even claimed that you know women were in positions of power even in the northern parts of of now nigeria mm -hmm. so i suppose nigeria was a healthy and wealthy 
um, nations of empires and kingdoms that had their interrelations. And um, unfortunately, these um, empires were sort of, you know, joined into one a, um, a country and or one colony and then called Nigeria. So that's from my perspective and, and from my research. Thank you very much, uh, Precious, for uh, sharing your insight on that. Let me just drag uh, Stephen in. Stephen, you've been to Nigeria yeah. yourself, if I may be right, yeah? Have you been to Niger Niger Nigeria? I haven't, unfortunately. I was meant to, but obviously with, uh, you know, the pandemic and everything, it kind of put a, <laughs> a pause in all the plans. But, you know, hopefully one day. But, you know, I've been doing my research and, you know, I'm here trying to help out the cause with all these great people here who are dedicated, you know, for reform and everything. So I'm just, I want to spread information and help where I can. Mm -hmm. Very good, Stephen. I'll come back to, to you about more on that. Angela, let me move over to, to you. From what Preston was saying about what Nigeria used to be, our teams would change and all that kind of stuff. Today in Nigeria, what has really changed in this present generation? From back when Nigeria was not Nigeria to now, yeah. well, we had an amalgamation of the northern and the southern part of Nigeria. Yeah. Before that, there were about three colonies, the Lagos um, colony, the northern side, and also the south. So mm -hmm. there was a man by the name of Lord Frederick Lugard, who was the governor of both the north and south. And he decided to combine all the three colonies together and make it Nigeria. Mm -hmm. And the word Nigeria was actually um, given by his wife. Um, I think her name is Flora. Okay. And that, that the meaning of Nigeria is not as pure as it seems. It means nigger, Nigeria, from the word nigger, which is black. Okay. So, yeah. Right, I'll come back to this question there. I want to move back a little bit more down to the formation of Nigeria 1914 to 1960. Um, I want you guys to kind of express on this one. And on this part, I want to bring Angela, that question will be for yourself and also for uh, Favor. Actually, you just mentioned that question. Let me bring Favor in for that. Favor, give us your insight about that formation. Yes, yeah, so basically the formation of Nigeria was, as um, Ms. Angela just said, um, I would see it as, because I've done a lot of research in trying to understand why it was decided to bring Nigeria under one umbrella, because um, as Precious said earlier, Nigeria had its own systems divided, not as, as a full country, okay? Mm -hmm. And then with um, historical records such as the Berlin Conference, which you hear, and um, the fact that we had to come together due to fear of invasion. Mm -hmm. it, for me, it brings to question what would be the tangible reason for wanting to bring together such a diverse group of people okay. under one umbrella out of the idea of being scared on behalf of we the Nigerians, you know? So there I find it a bit conflicting for a British government to come and on behalf of what they want to, of saying they want to help or whatever they want to do, decide to bring together different ethnicities, different diverse communities under one rule, just for the sole purpose of stopping an invasion or for the sole purpose of bringing them together. That, that, that's just uh, one thing I have with that. So the, for me, the, the bringing together or coming together under one roof is meaningless, basically. Yeah, okay. Let me throw this over to everybody, right? Because I know everyone has a different input. I know you guys have information. You've done your research, a lot of things. And I want to put this to everyone here. So people at home who are looking, uh, be able to have their own input. Because as Nigerians, everybody wants to be right or throw something that will make things change. What is the best way forward? I think I've asked you guys this question last year when we had the NSAS, uh, you know, protesting going on. I asked you guys this, this very same question again. What would be the best way moving forward? Because history, people keep going back to the history and history and history. And for me personally, uh, I think we've gone past this history thing because people don't live by, by the history. We live by, by the present. 
what would be the best way forward? What you guys need or to put together that can change because of the way things are like right now to everybody? Well, um, I post, do you want to go ahead? Oh, thank you. Stephen, do you want to um, go ahead? Yeah, can I? Okay, thank you. <laughs> I would say, I suppose there's two core elements. Um, with your average people, you need education. A lot of people aren't aware, like we talk of history and we're all aware of the history, but a lot of people aren't. They're not even aware of what happened even recently, like with the Civil War, uh, which say the various different republics, the Constitution, uh, the military's involvement throughout Nigeria's history. Mm. If they need to know their power and their rights, they need to be educated on everything, you know, and that will hopefully lead them to have belief in democracy and that they can change because they do have the power. They just don't realize it. But that, to me, that's true, not just with Nigeria, but throughout Africa. We're seeing, you know, for example, the protests that have continued on Uganda against one of the longest reigning leaders in Africa because... They know that they could do better. They are more aware and social media has helped a lot with that because they realize, hang on, we're being exploited. This isn't right. We see how other people live. We see what is possible. At the top level, I would say it's ultimately leadership. I mean, look, there needs to be a restructuring, yes. But at the end of the day, if you don't have good leadership, it won't matter what system you have in place. Mm -hmm. You look at, look at America, for example, it has standards. It's one of the world's oldest democracies, it has the constitution. Trump yeah. came in and he didn't care. Mm -hmm. Why? Because, well, he's the leader. He convinced a lot of people. So. A lot of it in many cases is cultural. That's what the rule of law is. When we talk of democracy, it's a belief. It's not actually, it's not necessarily, uh, you know, written down. And even when it is, it depends. You can just disregard it and do what you want. So okay. I'll okay. take it. Yeah, right. Stevie, you made some point there, you know, come back to those questions, things like education, awareness, those two that are, are, are very key, key, key back. Zabika, can mm -hmm. I bring you in? I, I know you wanted to kind of say something in there. Yeah, I was going to say like moving forward for Nigeria, what I think Nigeria needs at this point in time is for the tribes, a separation. So like, I would love to see the 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 Yorubas, the Hausas, the Igbos, the Benis have their own separate region, just like America has, just like the um, the UK has. We've got, we, we have the Northern Ireland, Wales, mm -hmm. Scotland and England. They all have separate governments where they all work together. I would love to see a Nigeria where that could happen because I'm still going back to history. We are all very different. As a as a I'm half Hausa and half Yoruba, my mm -hmm. culture is very different from that of um, Precious, which who, who is able. So like I would love for Nigeria to be separated, but yet work together because I mean we're like we're kind of under one umbrella as well. Okay, don't you guys think here that one on one ground we're talking about um, education on one ground we're talking about separation on one ground we're talking about history so these are all the all I wouldn't say it's a confusion but I'm trying to understand what exactly is the main root of this in order for us to be able to move on beyond where we are to, to, today because one Stephen mentioned oh education is a key you know awareness is a key uh, Debbie was talking about separation and also power. And when you even look, look at it uh, in the old Nigeria issue, it just seems to be there's only three tribes that is only recognized in the whole entire country. You're not talking about all the different tribes are there. The Robbers are there, the Ijos are there, the Benis are there, the, all the different, you know, um, or, or different, you know, groups or tribes, they're all in there. So what are the best way to really make sure power is in everyone's hand? Well, can I, can I answer that, please? Okay, yeah. So basically, Nigeria, first of all, we have to understand that Nigeria was a business move. It wasn't, out of, it wasn't born out of love. Nigeria was a business move by the British colonial empire who needed the fund, funds to fight the war, to fight their wars. So like, the Nigerian men, they were, they were scooped out of Nigeria to go fight a war that they had no business fighting. The Nigerian industry at the time, you, you, you know about the Royal Niger that was set up. It was a business move. So we going back to history is so important because we need to understand the foundation of why Nigeria was created, which is business. Okay, so now bear this in mind, we have our different differences, our cultures and all of that. I think that one of the, one of the, um, one of the mechanisms that was, well, that was used to gain control of the Nigerian people was to break down their morale. So their gods were seen as evil, their ways of life were seen as bad, and then they were they had another set of cultures, a set of rules imposed on them that they really didn't have any um, idea or knowledge about. So when we talk, when, I think Zainab, what Zainab was talking about was a regionalized government where each state will have power of a 
they, they will have autonomy, they have power over their region. Because right now we have a centralized government that is not working. And then if we're going to go back to history as well, we have something like the constitution that was born out of this same business idea that was used to form Nigeria. So that also has to be changed, that has to be uh, um, amended in order for Nigeria to really progress. If these things are not dealt with, Nigeria is not going to go anywhere. Now we're 60 years old, we're still very, very backwards. There's no progress. You okay. know, so we, we really have to go back in time and we have to start from the beginning, start from the roots and break down these strongholds that are preventing us from moving forward. Precious, you want to come in there quickly on that? Uh, Prussia just came in. Uh, sorry, I'll take off. Sorry, I'll take off. So, um, okay, so <laughs> basically, what I was just going to say was if you, it's something that has to do with a trend. Now, at the beginning, according to records, you would read that Lord Lugard ensured that no form of education, no form of, um, I would say, upgrade was made on the north. All mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. And if you look down towards even to the NSAS movement that happened right now, it's it's not surprising that every issue that happens with Nigeria finds its way back to religion, finds its way back to ethnicity, no matter what it is. If you look throughout, yeah. no matter what happens, whether government business, whatever it is, it always finds its way back to ethnicity. Even mm -hmm. the Boko Haram issue we had, uh, not an issue, but the Boko Haram um, that we had over the while, they were more about no education, education is false, education is this. So, it's it's back to what Zainab said. It's not the, the fact that we are now deciding to say, okay, maybe a separation, maybe a, a, a divide could be the good news or could be useful or important. It's only pointing to the fact that no matter what happens, we always seem to go back to the issue of people are not treated fairly. Everyone is not given the same right. People feel that, okay, this people, um, maybe the Yorubas or the North or the South has a bit of hold over. So that's why it's always boils down back to that point. Okay, fair enough in, in the way you kind of say things there, but we've seen countries who have divided in different ways, South Sudan and, and uh, I think in North Sudan or so. We've seen the outcome of how things have happened. Okay, if you guys are looking at uh, the divide in the country, just it's not like you wanted it, but because of what is happening, why it's regional couldn't look at in world in the past few years with the way they've lived life or have families and people working and stuff like that. What resources does each uh, state does have that they can work with to increase or help education, job, career creation, other areas that can really make life become better? It seems to be everybody look up to the, uh, as in the, the federal government. And technically, the federal government have the limitation of how it can do things. And this is why lobby is all over the place. And it's difficult for whatever they need to, to do to really get centralized. So my question to you guys is that with the power each state does have, why can't they use those power to do some things more better? Well, no, go that's on. a good question. Oh, sorry, thank you. Question. Um, I would say it's um, a matter of greed, you know, mm. if, if I can say that. And the people who are empowered, they mostly think for themselves. It's all about what they can get, what they can get as as a national cake. It's like a self um, sense of entitlement. I don't see any leader that actually cares for their citizens enough to have funds for education or roads. It's it's a matter of when the government gets money and they give it to the local states, they, it doesn't it doesn't get as far as the pockets of the governors, mm. and it stops there, you know. Okay, let me bring Stephen on now. Stephen, can, can I take your uh, input on that, please? Yeah. You yeah, know, I would agree with that. It's like what I said earlier. It's leadership. You know, it's corruption at all levels. And now the reason why you have such corruption is. It's centralized. I mean, in theory, Nigeria is federal. In reality, it is a unitary state. It is centralized because you need to keep corruption at the top. And then you obviously you dole it out to those at the you know state or local level, again, to keep loyalty and to keep the whole corruption thing going. Realistic, and when we talk of division, we're essentially trying to really, we're talking really more about restructuring, not necessarily like a South Sudan, North Sudan situation. But like You have to remember that Amer uh, Nigeria is partially based off America, which we know is a federal system. But you look at America, they very much keep the wealth at a local and state level. And they obviously, like you have state taxes, federal taxes, and the federal taxes like for defense, for common things that benefit America as a whole. But look at Texas, it has a lot of mineral wealth, oil and gas. It keeps most of its wealth 
and part of it goes towards the federal government, which benefits America as a whole. Same with, say, Alaska, for example. And there's obviously other states who have their own things going on, like California has its tech industry. If we were to make Nigeria like that, where each state would do its own thing, uh, would benefit economically, obviously, with the right leadership. And obviously, then you could bring it down to, say, the local government area as well, you know, and then that would I would be better, I feel, for a protection of the different, you know, minority ethnicities there. Right. You make some good point, but that is the point I'm trying to kind of drive at, where instead of all still trying to go back to the history, even though we go back to the history to tomorrow, it will still change the mind of people to, to, to today. Exactly what you just mentioned there, Stephen, is what is needed. It's not like they don't know these things. They know these things, but how can we break the cycle of this so that people can move forward and start to do this thing to make it work? I can guarantee you that if you ever hope for a federal government to really be able to do everything 100%, I can guarantee you it's very impossible. So I think I'm sorry. I don't I don't agree I think with that. that. The constitution um, needs to be needs to be done up again. It needs to be re um, amended because that constitution is badly written. It's not it doesn't protect the citizens as much. So like if the constitution is amended, I feel like we'll be able to move forward with the regional separation, with education, with a lot of stuff. Because right now there's a lot of things are lacking in Nigeria. Like we, I know a lot of people say like the government is corrupt, but every single person in Nigeria, I'm gonna say this with a straight face, every single person in Nigeria is corrupt. Everyone is corrupt because of the way the system is made. So if they, if they, if there's accountability, if people are punished for their actions, if people are just like here abroad, like if you speed, you get tickets, you get fines. If people are being, you know, getting fines and stuff like that, I feel like Nigeria will move forward. And this has to go back to the constitution, which is also going back to, you know, the rules and regulations of each state. So like for us to really move forward, we have to go back to history. We have to break down that constitution and redo it again, like start again as a, as a, as a nation. That's my um, opinion. All right, guys, look, we're going to take a quick few minutes break and then um, we will come back. We want to talk about uh, Nigeria independence and also want to talk about the Northern uh, nationalization and all the kind of uh, policy policy. So uh, I want to kind of go into all of those. Okay, viewers at home, stay tuned for more of the show, a smart talk in relation to the ongoing issue in Nigeria. We'll be right back. Take it away. Thank you.